Hey everyone, Will here from Mature Mighty Gamers, and today I'm joined by Eric and Ryan, and we just finished up Aeon's End Legacy. I love Aeon's End. It's no spoiler there for how much I love this game. And, uh, you know, we, we've we been playing this on and off for the past couple months, and we finally just finished it today. No spoilers at all, but this, this game was good. It was a lot of fun. I can definitely uh, say I enjoyed it. It's one of the few Legacy games that we played all the way through. Um, that we didn't give up in, or the group broke up. A um, lot of fun. Really liked the different uh, characters that we went with. Ryan, you were talking earlier about how we kind of complimented each other with our builds, which I think you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the heck out of it. Absolutely. So there were a lot of uh, similarities to, obviously, Aeon's End, any of the other, like, uh, outcasts. Right, and there's several of them, right? So I, I'm terrible with names, but yeah, we played, uh, you know, all of them, right? Have we missed any at this point? Not, not yet. But okay. like, it's very similar, like when you play Outcasts or New Age, where you're going to be going through and unlocking a story as you go, and you know, fighting different minions or different uh, nemesis, and unlocking different mages or whatever. But in this, it's really you're going to be staying with the one mage. You're going through and uh, gaining new powers, abilities. Your ability cards are going to be changing. In every, every game, you're going to be evolving it in true legacy fashion, right? Now, there was nothing in there that saw us rip up cards, right? We could we, we tried. We yeah, could've. they, they tried, but I wouldn't let them rip up anything. But, uh, you know, because I, I really love this game. I wouldn't even, as far as to get the reset pack, um, and I, I absolutely adored this game. Um, the art is standard fare for uh, Aeon's End, mm -hmm. right? Basic standard yeah. art for there. And, you know, the game doesn't differentiate itself. Um, as far as a like, different gameplay or anything, but I think the mages themselves are through the evolution of the story and everything. You know, because the, the, these nemesis are a lot harder than the base games. Okay. And as you get further and further, you've really got to have a more powerful mage than what you would have just going up against just a, a regular nemesis. And you know, just the amount of, of stuff that your mage gets is awesome, and how everyone is going to be completely different. Right? Yeah, because, I mean, you, you nailed it. Because you, your mage gets stronger, you customize it and build it how you want. And, you know, if you know what you're doing and you're doing it right, you're going to get pretty strong by the end of the uh, end of the legacy games. And hopefully, you know, you haven't messed up. I mean, none of the powers are going to be drastically, like, you're not going to break the game by picking the wrong power necessarily. But it, you just may not be as strong as you could be. And, you know, where when you play typical, like, Aeon's End... You reset every time you play. Like, you know, you're back to the base mage with your your one ability. or It's just one ability per mage, I think, right, when you mm -hmm. start. Um, and that's the kind of nice thing about Aeon's End is you keep building up. So that one ability will become stronger. Or maybe it'll splinter off and do a different thing, too, which I, I really thought was cool. Or your uh, Well, as somebody who's never played any version of Aeon's End before, uh, the game had a really nice learning curve to it. It uh, allowed uh, me as a new player to sort of ramp up to what some of the abilities and so forth were. So I don't have a lot of comparison to the previous versions uh, because it's the only version of the game I've ever played before. So even hearing you guys talk about uh, the, sort of the decks rebuilding, I was like, well, we kind of did that. But yeah, the difference is, is that I get to keep whatever, uh, all, you know, the abilities and stuff that I've earned and I don't have to reset. Uh, I think uh, my lack of exposure or knowledge to the previous games sort of probably helped build that complimentary attitude that our decks, because like, I was grabbing in the early, in the early game, I was grabbing some restrictive powers, no spoilers, uh, about when and how I could use some of my cards and so forth. But that drove me in a direction that was opposite than maybe what would be optimal of the single or of the the individual game. Mm. But in the long term, it built a deck or a mage that was very helpful, I think, moving forward. So, um, you know, I, I had a ton of I had a ton of fun. This is the first legacy game I've ever finished. Um, so it was, it was a good experience and this, it, I will say like at the beginning, I wasn't near invested in the story, but by the end, uh, the sort of the repetitive nature, not repetitive nature, but sort of the, the, the concurrent characters that kept coming through, uh, it, it started to, to make some investment in there and, uh, it was, it was, it was, a, it, was a, it was a joy. It was fun. Right. Now, as far as like, you know, the, the characters that you, we saw in this, those same characters actually wrapped themselves in a every single other Aeon's End, and, and um, as you've played through the other ones, you know, you get introduced to one or two of the, the higher-up mages, the Breach mages, and this one pretty much had them all. 
Oh, okay. And that, that was really cool to kind of say, hey, you know, we've got this overarching story with almost everybody. And I thought it was really neat to see how the story progressed and how things changed and what happened to each of the characters and, you know, some of the higher up reach mages and, and what transpired. And it was just kind of really neat to see the, the world really fleshed out. And I, I thought that was great because, you know, when you play the other games, you know, you've got like, was he, I think you were saying it's just open to close, right? You so see, you play once and then you okay, you pack up, and then next time you play, you pick a different rage, and then you go up against a different nameless, and boom, you're you're off to the races. But this, you know, you when you really were growing your mage, become more powerful and change. But then also the things that happen to the the bigger breach mages, the the, the leaders, if you will, um, really solidified who they were in, in the overarching story, which I thought was great. So I, I wouldn't really say that this is. If, if you're not a fan of Aeon's End, I, I really don't think this is going to change your mind. Oh, no, definitely because it's Just because it's Legacy. So if you're just a huge fan of Legacy games, I think you've also really got to be a fan of Aeon's End to enjoy this game uh, from open to close. Right. Uh, if, you, if you like deck builders, if you've never played Aeon's End and you like, you know... Engine Builders, I guess, is more what they call it. Um, you're going to like this game, I think. It's it's my favorite. It used to be Ascension. I think Aeon's Zen has taken it over now. Um, it's just so much fun. And I liked how every monster we faced had a different uh, mechanic that you that you had to deal with. So it changed. It's not just doing straight damage. Like, all of a sudden, we need somebody pulling tokens off or, you know, doing something different. And it kept us uh, on our feet every game, I thought. Yeah. Multiple games came down to the wire. Yes. It was a matter of flip of the card if the if the nameless is going next or if it was mm -hmm. if it was going to be us right whether we won or not and you know that's that's just the nature of the beast here because if you get those bad pulls um, you know the game can become drastically harder so I think it was one turn you went four times in a row because yeah. of the wild cards that we have at the three player game mm -hmm. hey, you know that was our choice but hey it was it had to happen <laughs> it was definitely a lot of fun so yeah. Um, so yeah I recommend this game. To the extreme, I like I said, I think if you like Aeon's End, you like deck builders, you like engine building, this is by far my absolute favorite version of Aeon's End just because I got to I got to really feel connected to my character. Um, I think part of that, you know, when you go through and you name things, you name your, mm -hmm. your spells, or you name this, that, or the other without any kind of spoilers, but when you go through and you write things down, I mean, there's just some sort of like connection there. And then when you play them the next time. Right. Right. Definitely. So there's uh, eight different chapters, eight different missions that you play in this, and then uh, just, you know, so eight different games, possibly a 16. If you lose, you can play it again or whatever, but uh, a ton of fun. Uh, I'm not sure, what do you guys think as far as replayability? Would this, be, even with the reset pack, would this be something you'd be even intrigued to want to play again? So I had fun, and if I played a different character, I think I, think I could play it again. With that said, there's so many board games to play, and, you know, I don't know if I would really, like, pick this to play again. But I do think it could be fun. If you're really into it, just pick a different character. I mean, it's going to be a completely different experience for you, most, other than you're going to kind of know what's coming. But I mean, I think there's a second version of Legacy, right? Legacy of Gravehold. So, like, I, I think probably I would, I'd move towards that if, if that was available. Uh, I, I think the, the power here, in, in, and we, have, we haven't looked at this yet, but this becomes a regular version of Aeon's End. When it re at the end, like right. you got enough cards there to reset everything back to the basic, and you could probably still play versions of your characters if you had that emotional attachment to them or you had that attachment to them uh, to go back through and play through different aspects of this game. Whether I would start from the very beginning and move forward again, I don't know because I think, well, honestly, I think it depends. <laughs> because the thing is, is there's the you know the evolved deck is so large, mm -hmm. and we only seen a fraction of it. That's true. So depending on how the you know the second chapter goes down, if I feel like the game is drastically different just because the the cards on the table or the polls that we've had or the way that we think, I think it could probably have a long a much more interesting version of the game. But I kind of like what Eric was said. There's lots of games out there. Um, I'm I would look forward to play more of any of these other versions of this game. Uh, <laughs> all these other games uh, that are all over this uh, room. But. Uh, but uh, I think it, I think if you were a huge fan, I don't think you'd have a problem re-rolling and doing it all over again. With maybe like add two new people to the group. Would you be interested in taking your character out of this and then playing it in a one shot in one of the other base games? Would you take your character, the one that you felt that attachment to, and want to say, okay, I'm going to take this character? I think it would be so unbalanced though, because we're so strong. Unless we like, you know, didn't use our special abilities and stuff that we got. Spoiler slightly. Well, yeah. 
It could be, but I mean, you have built that character. That it's like it's like taking a RPG character. You know, you yeah. have this level five wizard that you've been playing in D and D, right? And you're like, oh, I want to take him into your campaign. You right. know, it's up to the GM, obviously. But would you do that, or would you want to roll a new character if you're saying, hey, you know, okay, you can take a level five character and you can bring it in this campaign we're gonna do. If, if we bounced, if we were all using our special characters and we wanted a hard challenge, then yeah, I'd roll with that. But oh, right. If, but but if you guys were rolling new characters. And now it's going to be super, you know, a lot more stronger. I would definitely roll a new character. Just because I think that's one of the fun things for me is, I mean, just like in D&D, half the fun is building your character. And, okay, well, now I'm going to be a rogue. Let's see what we can do this way, you know, instead of being a, a fighter or a paladin or something. And, and that's, I guess, one of the things I really like about it is the puzzle. Like, figuring out what is going to be the most, the, the best way to overcome the Nameless's specific obstacle. Right, the, the yeah. way how they how they win or how they can defeat Gravehold or you, and then trying to figure out what the cards that are on the table because that's a randomized factor as well. Right, right, and trying to figure out that solution and th th again that just brings up so how well this game has been designed from from the the ground up as far as like Aeon's End itself, not necessarily Legacy, but Aeon's End that I think it just it does so many things right. I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. Okay. okay. And I, and I have, I, I can, I, I have the privilege to do so, um, because now that I'm thinking through this, and, and again, I'm coming at this with no experience in the rest of this universe. This is all I have. Um, there were definitely some mechanics of experience that I enjoyed. That as we progressed through the game, that that you call them nameless, the the the, the nemesis, yeah, the nemesis would do. And then once we defeated him, we never saw that mechanic necessarily roll back in from the bad guy side. Now from like the storytelling was nice because we had to solve that puzzle every single time, but I think the the gamer side of me would like to go back and at least try those sorts of mechanics again to see how we would handle them differently. So I'm going to go back and say yes, I would play this version of the game again, um, if nothing else, is to go through those puzzles again, maybe from a different side, of, different standpoint. Trying different solutions, trying different yeah. puzzle. Uh, yeah. I'll be honest, I played a lot of legacy games and I finished. Probably more than anybody else in this room, I would assume. Um, and and it, towards the end, a lot of times, it gets to where you're just ready to finish it. I didn't yeah. feel that way with this game. Like I kind of like I felt like my character was really in its prime, and I wanted to keep playing, and I wanted our group because we had such a good group. Like yeah. we really complimented each other. Like I felt like we could take on anything. Um, and even though that, and we were talking about it, you know, we're steamrolling this game towards <laughs> the end, <laughs> right? And, right and, before and, the last <laughs> battle, right? Yeah, and then the last battle, like Grateful got down to one health, and we were like scrambling, <laughs> like to, and we got lucky, we, really. Yeah, we yeah. were both, we were both dead, we were both exhausted, and you know, you're the last man standing. And Grateful only had one health, and we pulled it off. I got two health too. That's all I had. Right. So the, oh yeah, yeah, it, it was close. So yeah, definitely good, good balance. Yeah, good yeah. balance. So, and then even for the versatility of like, we could even go back through and play because we use the basic rules right we didn't use the advanced nemesis rules right we didn't play in the ultra difficult mode either. right so i mean even if we go back and, and we take that added challenge to say okay we're going to add these advanced rules of the game it's really starting oh this is just too easy you know play through it again with the advanced rules and and even taking your advanced character into some of the other games with the advanced rules might bring some balance to hey these characters are powerful because we've played through them for you know, X number of games, right, and built them up for different in different ways. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. I agree. Um, the advanced rules did add a lot of variety. It really seemed a lot harder too. Like it almost was like you're playing on easy mode as normal, and then all of a sudden the advanced rules were like, okay, you know, you're in for a ride here. Like you got to play really smart. Right. Um, so so you know, I think that's kind of what we steered away from. Well, we started without them, and I think we kind of wanted to finish it. But yeah, I think it would definitely add in that, uh, that extra layer of. Uh, complexity and you know challenge all right so uh this is definitely a recommendation for me what was the price point on this will uh base price was 60 i was thinking or 80 it seems like 80 bucks 80 bucks give or take probably I'm, i imagine you can get it for a little bit cheaper now i mean we got uh, over uh, probably easily to over 20 hours right yeah all right i mean well worth the money in my opinion oh yeah so recommendation from you as well oh yeah for sure recommendation oh yeah Absolutely. So, all right, everybody, this has been Will, Eric, and Ryan from Mature Mighty Gamers doing our review for Aeon's End Legacy, an absolutely amazing game from Indie car, uh, excuse me, Indie Boards and Cards and Action Phase Games. So do yourselves a favor and check this one out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. So, 
All right, everybody, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We do so many great things on our website, video game, board game, Star Trek podcasts, and just so much more. Join us on our Discord. We'd love to have you. Have you. And, uh, yeah, so until next time, everyone, stay safe. Game on.